approval with the open public meeting law has been satisfied. Notice is properly given. Said notice having been transmitted to the Carrier News and Star Ledger on Wednesday, January 9th, 2019, as well as posting on the bulletin board in the city clerk's office. And if I may, I have a roll call. Council Member Samani? Here. Davis? Present. Good? Present. McCray? Present. Storch? Absent on roll call. Vice President Hockaday? Present. Council President Mills Ramsey? Present. We have six members present in the form. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. true agreement with his will and to grant the light of his spirit on all those who work for justice and peace. Amen. 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 May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting? So. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any communications from the mayor? Yes, Madam President. His Honor the Mayor, Adrian O'Mac, has submitted the following nominees for advice and consent from the governing body. Lisa Burgess, the Plainfield Police Director, and Myra Paredes and Drew Dana for the Plainfield Shade Tree Commission. Are there any ceremony matters? None at this time. Uh, we do have some unfinished business. A public hearing on the uh, 2019 Plainfield Municipal Introduced Budget has been scheduled for this evening. May I have a motion to open the floor for a public hearing on the 2019 Plainfield Municipal Introduced Budget as advertised? So moved. May second. I have a second? Okay. The floor is now open. Seeing no one come to the mic, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? Move. Second. Second. Okay. The public hearing is now closed. Consideration of public hearing, second reading, and final passage. Clerk, please read MC 2909 by title and further certify that the ordinance has complied with all statutory publication requirements. MC 2019-09 is an ordinance adopting an amendment and restated redevelopment plan for the Todd North Avenue redevelopment area. And it's hereby certified that notice of public hearing of this ordinance was published in the Corey News on Tuesday, April 16, 2019. The floor is now open for any member of the public who would like to speak on this ordinance. May I have a motion to close the public hearing on the ordinance? So be. Second. May I have a motion to adopt this ordinance on second reading and final passage? And if adopted, the ordinance shall be published as required by the law. So Clerk, be. may I have a roll call? Uh, I'm sorry, a motion. Sorry. So be. Second. Second. Clerk, may I have a roll call? Council Member Zamani? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom. Yes. This ordinance is adopted on second reading and final passage. Clerk, please read MC 2019-10 by title and further certify that the ordinance has complied with all statutory publication requirements. MC 2019-10 is an ordinance adopting the amendment of restated redevelopment plan for the Tide South Avenue redevelopment area. And is hereby certified that notice of a public hearing on this ordinance was published in the Corey News on Tuesday, April 16, 2019. The floor is now open to any member of the public who would like to speak on this ordinance. May I have a motion to close the public hearing on this ordinance? So be. Second. Clerk, may I have a roll call? Council Member Somani? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. 
Council President Bill Fransky. Yes. This ordinance adopted on second reading of the final task. Clerk, please read MC 201911 by title and further certify that the ordinance has complied with all statutory publication requirements. MC 2019-11 is an ordinance providing for a session emergency appropriation. The amount not to exceed $200,000 to fund the preparation of a master plan for the city of Plainville. It is hereby certified that notice of the public hearing of this ordinance was published in the Corridor News on Tuesday, April 16, 2019. The floor is now open to any member of the public uh, who would like to speak on this ordinance. I have a motion to close the public hearing on this ordinance. Move. Second. May I have a motion to adopt this ordinance on second reading and final passage, and if adopted, the ordinance shall be published as required by law. So moved. Second. May I have any roll call? Council Member Zamani? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom. Yes. This ordinance is adopted on second reading of the final passage. Clerk, please read bond 1267 by title and further certify that the ordinance has complied with all statutory publication requirements. Bond 1267 is a bond ordinance provided for various 2019 capital acquisitions and improvements by and in the city of Plainfield and the county of Union State, New Jersey, appropriating $3,500,000. Therefore, I authorize the issuance of three million three hundred twenty-five thousand bonds and notes of the city to finance part of the cost thereof. It is hereby certified that notice of a public hearing on this ordinance was published in the Corey News on Tuesday, April 16, 2019. The floor is now open to any member of the public who would like to speak on this ordinance. May I have a motion to close the public hearing of this ordinance? Moved. Second. May I have a motion to adopt this ordinance on second reading and final passage, and if adopted, the ordinance shall be published as required by law. So moved. Second. Clerk, may I have a roll call? Council Member Zamani? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom? Yes. This ordinance is adopted on second reading and final passage. A total of 30 minutes has been allocated for public comments, limited to resolutions and ordinances being considered this evening. If you wish to be heard, please give your name and address to the clerk for the record. Each speaker will be given three minutes. The floor is now open. May I have a motion to close public comments? So moved. Second. Public comments are now closed. Clerk, will you please read the consent agenda this evening? Madam President, the, con the consent agenda has been identified as R16019 through R16819 and R17419 through R18019 and R18719 through R19719. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Council Member Zamani? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom? Yes. The consent agenda is approved. Clerk, will you please read the remaining resolutions? Resolution R169-19 is granting a vice to consent to the appointment of Lisa Burgess. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. And roll call. Council Member Zamadi? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom? Yes. Resolution is approved. Congratulations. <laughs> Resolution R-17019 is granted advice and consent to the appointments of the Plainfield Shade Tree Commission. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. <laughs> you have everything for a roll call. Thank you. Now you have the station.
This resolution is not 100% for the pedestrian uh, plaza project. Uh, we're still looking for the, the federal funding that we have, and this is just to match that, that federal funding that we have. Any other questions? Opposed? 
of stitches. New items. Madam President, uh, uh, you, clerk. Okay. Madam President, we have a new item identified as R198-19, which is a councilmatic resolution granting the use of city-owned property, lots number 8 and 8A to conduct the Outdoor Multicultural Festival. And a motion will be required to add this item to the agenda for consideration. Okay. May I have a motion to add R198-19 to the agenda? So moved. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's Duchess. You have to now adopt it. Uh, to adopt, okay. I will now entertain a motion to adopt R198-19. So oh, moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Madam President, we have another new item um, identified as R199-19, which was a resolution amending the allocation of funds for the award of a professional service contract to Bononia and Associates Incorporated for the North Avenue of Gabba Place Pedestrian Mall improvements. And a motion will be required to add this item to the agenda for consideration. May I have a motion to add so R199-19 to the agenda? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I will now entertain a motion to adopt R199-19. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Let's do a roll call. Roll call on resolution R199-19. Is council members Amadi? Yes. Davis? No. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Felix President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom? Yes. Resolution is approved. Introduction of ordinances on first reading. We now come to ordinances on first reading. Clerk, will you please read ordinance MC 2019-12 by title. MC 2019-12 is an ordinance authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with IC Development Urban Renewal LLC and granting the tax exemption with respect to affordable housing project commonly known as the Allen Young Apartments and identified on the city's tax map as Block 105, Block 1, Block 701, Block 1, and Block 215, Lot 2. Council President, I have a question on this ordinance. Are there, are there any questions from the council? Yes. yes. Um, so I have two questions. The first question is, have we ever given a pilot to a property after they were given a pilot? Yes, we have. Um, and then my second question is, if this ordinance didn't pass for some reason, what would be the ramifications of that? The property will become uh, a vacant and abandoned property, and we will have to coordinate removal of all the residents from that, from that, that complex. One of the things that we have tried to do and that we will continue to do um, is to make sure that we provide decent quality affordable housing to the people of the city who need decent housing. And without this, it would not be possible for those who now live in these apartments to continue to improve their quality of life. And so the investment that is being made will certainly help to make that possible. And so the administration takes great pleasure in presenting this for your consideration. Any other questions? Council? I should add it's a three million dollar investment property and it's a great investment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I will now entertain a motion.
motion to adopt this ordinance on first reading. So moved. Second. Okay, clerk, I have a roll call. Council Member Zamani? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom? Yes. This ordinance is adopted on first reading. Clerk, will you please read ordinance MC 2019-13 by title? MC 2019-13 is an ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 2, Administration, Article 15, Office of the City Clerk, Section 2, creating Section 2, colon 15-3, a municipal code establishing the city flag and regulating the use of the city flag. Are there any questions from the council? I will now entertain a motion to adopt this ordinance on first reading. So moved. Second. It's second. Man, roll call. Council Member Zamani? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom? Yes. This ordinance is adopted on first reading. Clerk, will you please read ordinance MC 2914 by title? MC 2019-14 is an ordinance grant, granting Type 39 jurisdiction to the City of Plainfield over roads and parking lots located at a property known as 926-1018 North Avenue, Block 402, Lot 7, shown on the Plainfield City Tax Map Sheet 17, Zoning Board Application 2017-11. Are there any questions from the Council? Yes. If I could just have further clarification on what this ordinance um, exactly does and what's the public benefit for this ordinance? Uh, yes, President. So, Chapter 39, what it does, it, it allows our police uh, department force to be able to enforce uh, vehicle traffic violations in a private parking lot. So, both for uh, uh, MC 2914 and MC 2915 as well. So the public purpose is that, you know, if anybody goes into the parking lot and is not following the traffic uh, ordinance, the police are able to go in, in that parking lot and enforce uh, traffic ordinance. Okay, so for MC 2019-15, the parking lot isn't that big. So what exactly would the police be enforcing there? If there's a motor vehicle accident, somebody gets into an accident, uh, we have jurisdiction over the service. Basically, on private property, we can't wait more vehicle services if there's an accident. That's, that's one example. In addition, if you don't have your car registered, we can tell it. In addition, if you don't have proper insurance, you can get a ticket for it. It would essentially be anything that falls under Title 39, which would be moving violations, parking, uh, you know, matters, anything, uh, any law that involves enforcement of the traffic board, of the traffic statutes, and do we have this in other private properties around the city? Numerous, yes, we do. So, I guess my question is, why would we want to have jurisdiction in a private, on private property? Well, it, it depends on the, on the uh, facility and the different areas of the lot. If somebody gets into a motor vehicle accident in a, in a lot, such as your car, if there's a problem, I'm sure you're going to properly investigate it, and you might want some of this issue. So it gives us a latitude to open up our investigations to have a little bit more fair and partial to be able to enforce the law. Thank you. Any other questions? I will now entertain a motion to adopt this ordinance on first reading. So be it. Okay. Roll call, please. Roll call on MC 2019-14. Councilmember Zamati? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom? Yes. This ordinance is adopted on first reading. Will you please, click, will you please read ordinance MC 2019-15 by title? This is the uh, MC 2019-15 is an ordinance granting Title 39 jurisdiction to the City of Plainfield over roads and parking lots located at the property known as 109-121 uh, East 4th Street, Block 840, Lot 701, shown on Plainfield City Tax Map Sheet 91, Zoning Board Application 2012-33. Are there any questions from the Council? Yes. Yes. Council Member Zamani? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. 
Are there any questions from the council? Yes. Um, so for that, I guess my question is more of a public works question. Um, when are we going to enforce, like, the parking lot over there isn't even completed, but yet we're going to enforce an ordinance that says the police have jurisdiction over a parking lot that's not even being used. Um, so is there a way that we can speed up the process so the residents of that building can use that parking lot? The process as far as? I don't know. Whatever we can do to get the property owner to even complete the parking lot for residents to even use it. Because right now this ordinance is useless if nobody's even using that parking lot. Well, the ordinance wouldn't be useless, but yes, whatever has to be done with the public works standpoint, we'll fill it Thank you. I will now entertain a motion to adopt this ordinance on first reading. So be it. Seconded. I have a roll call, please. Council members, Amadi? Yes. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McCray? Yes. Vice President Hockaday? Yes. Council President Mills Ransom? Yes. This ordinance is adopted on first reading. And a public hearing on all of these ordinances will take place at the next combined meeting of the Plainfield City Council on Monday, June 17, 2019. Thank you. Uh, before I go into general comments, I'd like to ask the members of the council to introduce your CBEC member once again. We were supposed to have resolutions tonight for them. They are not ready. We've apologized already. They will get them. But if your person is here, would you recognize them and have them stand? And we do want to appoint them again for bringing this budget work together. I'll go first. Mine was the budget chair, Ms. Valerie Ellis. Representative was to wish a Rogers. My representative was Juan Velasquez. My representative is not present, but it was Cheyenne Andrews. We are really grateful to you, and I'm also seeing that the mayor wants to speak. Okay. Well, thank you, Council President. I have sat on this council. 1998, and I have seen many reports from different CBAC committees, and I must say to you, the members who served this year, that the report that you provided to the governing body was very comprehensive, very, a lot of work went into it, your recommendations were well received, and I commend you for the job that you did. It's one of the best CBAC reports that I have seen, that I've heard since being an elected member here in the city of Plainfield, both as a member of the governing body as well as the mayor of the city. So I want to thank you for the work and for your dedication. Thank you. Thank you. General comments. A total of 60 minutes has been allocated for all public comments to be presented. If you wish to be heard, please give your name and address to the clerk for the record. The amount of time any single speaker is allowed will be limited to five minutes. The floor is now open. Good evening, Joyce Sprague's residence address. Briggs Whitman, excuse me, 972 Oakland Avenue, thank you, Plainfield, New Jersey. I'm here uh, as a business owner. Uh, Thursday, late Thursday, my business, excuse me, is located on 5th Street, uh, directly across the street from City Hall on the 5th Street running right aside. I saw on Thursday that the city was doing something with the meters and taking the meters out. We thought maybe they were going to do a kiosk of some sort to allow for parking. I was not in the area on Friday. This morning when I returned, I found that the city allocated on the 
north and side of Fifth Street, all for city parking. The business owners didn't get any notice of that. Um, I have, I'm here on behalf of myself as a business owner, as well as the beauty supply store, excuse me, salon. It's a um, gentleman, an elderly gentleman owns a beauty supply salon, a salon. And a lot of his clients are very elderly. I mean, I see myself them having difficulty getting out of cars. Um, I just think it's just really not considerate of the business owners as well as our customers that the city would allow that side of the street to be taken up for the city vehicles. The city has a parking lot. Um, the building that I'm, that I'm a tenant in also has a parking lot. And for upwards of about two years, was going through back and forth with uh, the city to try and determine how many spaces were going to be allowed. The building owner complied fully. There's landscape. It's probably one of the most beautiful parking lots in the city of Plainfield with gated electronic gate. But the point of why I'm here today, it's just I think that it's very unfair that the city did not notify any of the business owners that those parking spaces were being taken. Um, again, I know it's going to affect my business. I'm sure it's going to affect the um, other five businesses located in that short period of time. That leaves us basically with six public parking spaces for businesses, for parking spaces for businesses and our clients, our employees and clients. Um, I'm here by myself only because I've learned of this meeting just there, but I'm sure, and I know Garces and Graveler, he is on his way from New Brunswick. We recently learned of the meeting and the owner of the salon, who I think is probably the biggest concern that we have because of his clients and the fact that I know he has some handicapped clients that need close parking by. And I just think it's just an incon it was very inconsiderate and I'd ask that somebody take on with respect to the council to look into this. Another note, um, because we've all been in that block for about 27, I've been there 27 years, Jimmy's been there 35 years, another one of the employees for the firm on the corner is handicapped. Um, just as a courtesy, all of us, we leave that first spot for him. I mean, anyone can take the spot. It's public parking. We understand that. But we leave that spot for him. We leave the next spot for Jimmy because he's older, and then try to leave within our own ability, just as a circle of neighborhood businesses for some of his elderly clients. So again, the city taking that line on the other side is really going to interfere. And I noticed that the city has a parking lot to park at city cars. And even today, I noticed that there were three inspection cars that were there parked in that same spot when I came in the morning and are still there now. And so I'm just asking that someone from the council take that on to look on because, again, I believe it's going to affect my business a little bit, but I'm, again, really concerned with the salon next door and his senior citizens. And I think it would really be unfair. I know obviously something's going on with all the city's purchasing of new vehicles and maybe, you know, you need more spots, but maybe if the city's parking lot could be slanted to allow for more spaces, it would be helpful and considerate again. So it's a little rushed, but I found out about the meeting. I wanted to make sure I did it because I don't want to go through the normal, just send a letter because again, the first priority is Jimmy. And uh, so I wanted to come on behalf of myself, but more so him. And during the next meeting, I'm sure when they get a little bit noticed, I'm sure there'll be several more of the business owners here as well as their clients because, again, he's been there in excess of 30 years. I've been here 27 years. Garces and Garlow has been here 30 years. So, okay, thank you very much. second attempt to try to get a no parking sign taken uh, from, front, from the front of my house. Uh, last time I came here, I, my, I told you guys that I just refused to let my daughter have to park two blocks away for her safety, you know what I mean? At night when she comes to work because she can't find nowhere to park. Um, like I said, I've been living in my house for 25 years. I own my house for 25 years. 
And we've always been able to park on both sides. And like I said, for me, it's a matter of safety for my daughter. Since this happened, since they put those signs on, I don't had to help her pay five tickets. Because like I said, I refused to let her park away from my house. I'm not going to let that happen, like I told you guys before. Now, I, I, I took a few, I mean, I took a little tour to see. And just on the hillside, uh, Chatwin, Martin, <coughs> most of those people have driveways. And they're able to park on both sides. I measured the street. The street is 25 and a half. My street is over 30 to 32. Of feet. So I know it's a safety issue, but why, why isn't, it, isn't it a safety issue for those who live up in the hills there? It's not right. Even in front of the mayor's family house, you have a uh, park by permit only. All I'm asking for is a compromise. Allow us to park there between 9, 9 in the morning, give my daughter a chance to park there and get her butt to work at 9 o'clock, and I'll be happy. That's all I'm asking. So I'm, I'm, thank you for your time. Sir, could you state your address? Oh, sorry. 329 Franklin Place, Plainfield, New Jersey. Been there 25 years, had no problem with parking. Since you guys put that sign up, it's really putting a hardship on the people in that area. The other day, um, you got people parking from 7th Street, parking on the one side that we can park on. And we can't go and tell you, hey man, you can't park there. Because it's a public street. It's not right, it's not fair. Okay, so that's all I'm asking. Maybe we can come to a compromise, change the hours or something for us. Thank you. And congratulations. <laughs> okay. Johnny Pritchard, formerly of 723 Orange Avenue, Plainfield, now 410 Spruce Avenue, Garwood. Several things I'd like to address the city council on. We need to re-increase funding for the public, Plainfield Public Library. We cannot afford any cuts at all, especially when, especially when uh, students will be out of school during the summer. They'll need the library for studies and research and things of that nature. We cannot afford to cut library service at all. And I think the members of the council should realize this. Secondly, this is month, this is May. It's a month. In two weeks there will be veteran uh, Memorial Day. We will remember those who gave their lives fighting for our country. Sixteen of Plainfield sons that gave their lives during the war in Vietnam. Those who survived and came back, they were called Nazis, murderers, baby killers. I like that word Nazi to be retired once and for all. It's just, that word Nazi is just as bad as any other word, which of course I will not use. The poor brave soldier near the spies, they're counted as a stranger. Remember he says country stay in day and our danger. And Lastly, we need to reactivate Muhlenberg. We need to have that hospital back ASAP because this city needs it, the surrounding communities need that. We need a hospital that is capable of mission. We need a hospital that we can count on to help, to help us if we're injured or sick. What if an unidentified attack occurs? We'll need that hospital very, very badly. The sooner we're actually in Millenburg, the better off we all will be. Don't make myself clear. City. I loved it from the first day I saw it, and I've made a great living here. And look, I own the building on the corner of East Fifth and Watchung. I own the building next to it. I own the parking lot next to it. And taking away that parking on the other side of the road would really hurt 
our businesses, all the businesses on that, <coughs> on that road. I myself employ 115 people, and at that location, I have over 45 people who work there. And the other thing is that I have an idea that I think would solve the problem, because I realize you need municipal parking for those vehicles. What I was thinking, instead of the cars being parked like this, why don't we park them like this? In other words, you go, you know, all on both sides of the road, you know? In other words, and I see that, I see that one of the big problems I've noticed with that part of the road is that some cars think it's two ways because it's wide and it's really a one way. I'm thinking, let's take advantage of it. Let's be creative and create parking on both sides that does, I don't know what you call that, you know, but it, what is it? And if we did that, and I'm sorry I'm a little hard of hearing, but if we did that, I think it would really create double the parking spaces on both sides of the road and help everybody out. The city would be helped and all the, the owners would be helped. You could take two parking place spaces, one parking space and convert it to two. So we would have double the amount of parking just if we parked the cars that way, all the way. And make it a one way, only one car. You know, you could fit a large bus or whatever, but go right down. It's a one way road instead of a two way road. And uh, I think that'd be great. That's my, my input, and I thank you for your time, okay? Thank you. Um, okay. Seeing no one coming this time, then I have a motion to close Move. comments. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? Move.